your frequency determines your experience. Welcome to Beyond the Matrix. My name is Boris Kirchner. Today, let's talk about frequency, energy, and vibration. You've heard it said probably many times all over YouTube, change your frequency, change your life. Is that true? The answer is what we want to explore here today in this video. So it's very important to understand what it means when we talk about frequency. What we're really talking about is the set point, just like again with the experience of television. You are tuning in to a particular scene, right? Because you're on that channel, certain images, certain people, certain sounds, certain voices, and not others are appearing to you. So this is the very same type of effect when we talk about the frequency of our consciousness. What frequency are we conscious of, right? And based on that frequency, just like in the television show, certain voices are going to come to you. Certain images are going to be standing out and not others. And yet right here, right here next to you, there could be somebody who is tuned into a different frequency and their consciousness is aware of something entirely different. You're standing in seemingly the same room, but what you are aware of could be entirely different. One person could be aware of something that's a big problem. Another person could be aware of, wow, what an incredible opportunity. How blessed are we, right? So what is that difference that truly makes a difference? And that's what frequency, energy, and vibration is all about. That's what change your frequency, change your life is about. So when we talk about shifting our frequency, what is that really? Like, is that really just about you um, humming and going, mm, or is that about you picturing certain images or certain symbols or accessing a certain feeling, a certain feeling and certain frequency, a feeling tone within you, right? So what is it? It's actually all of that, but the real core of it. So this is the thing that most of the conversations around shifting your frequency really miss. So I really want you to slow down for this one, right? Take a breath, really slow down so that we can take this in. There's only actually one single thing that determines our frequency. That one thing is attention. It is simply your attention that is determining your frequency. Your attention, what you place your attention on is what grows, right? Where attention goes, energy flows, and that thing grows. There's no other way around it. Anything that you have ever learned up until this point, the only reason that you have learned that thing is because you repeatedly put your attention on it again and again and again whether that's math or that's English or that's walking or that's making money in the crypto market, whatever that is, or maybe that's a course in miracles or maybe it's the law of one or maybe it's meditation. Whatever you place your attention on is what naturally, inevitably dominates your experience and dominates your awareness. So how do we use this then faculty of attention in a way that truly serves us. And what does that mean, right? We have to really start with the awareness of what do we actually want, right? If we're not aware of what we want, then what does it even mean to serve us, right? So I wanna offer you that what you truly, truly, truly in your heart of hearts want is happiness. You may call that peace, love, joy, you may call that the awareness of God. You may call that self-realization. You may call that abundance. Uh, you may call that the most deep, intimate, holy relationship. But what at the core of it is a feeling. At the core of it, we want to be in that natural state. How could it be anything but a natural state when all the billions of different people, at least, let's say, are all seeking one thing? They're seeking happiness, fulfillment, joy, love, peace, the end of suffering. When does suffering end? Suffering ends when we are aware of our true self. 
That is the final point. Everything else up until then is a respite. It's like, oh, I'm gonna get that thing. And now I'm gonna get the next thing. It's almost like there's this crescendo that keeps building up in life. And you have one desire, and then desire goes dun 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 dun. You get that desire, and then it just starts going again into the next verse, right? Into the next harmonic. And on and on and on it goes. And that crescendo never truly peaks until you realize that there's nothing out here that could ever fulfill that. And so where's all this leading to? What is the way that we would work with setting our frequency? How do we change our life, right? So all of those different techniques I mentioned earlier, visualizing, working with symbols, working with sounds, uh, working with feeling tones, I practice all of those. All of those different things are really cool and engaging and they will help you to become more aware of, of the self. They'll become, you'll become more aware of how these different things work. I was gonna take that back. You may not actually, while practicing these different types of things which are all about external focus, you may not actually come to know more deeply who you are, to know the self. And that is why in certain circles of spiritual practice, we call that self-attention. To take attention that is otherwise focused on these external pursuits and to place it on the self. A little while ago, um, there's a video that I posted about awareness, aware of awareness. I am aware that I am aware. That is the place where if we place our attention there, truly it's the highest vibration because it's zero. It's, it's the unmanifest. It is pure, infinite potential, unlimited in any way. Yet everything that is manifest is inevitably limited because it is manifest in this dualistic um, um, context, right? It is this and not that, which makes it limited by definition. So the only way that we can tap into our limitlessness is when we place our attention on the true self, on that aspect that is further and further and further and further back towards the witnessing presence, back towards zero. So if we truly seek this enlightenment, illumination, fulfillment. Yes, all of those other practices can help us to attain certain things in our experience. And I very much, I very much love the cultivation of feeling tone, right? The bliss, the love, the happiness, the joy, right? To savor that in that meta, uh, in Pali they call it meta bhavna, right? The, the meta meditation, the loving kindness meditation, the feeling meditation, super powerful. But what's more powerful, what's more exciting, <laughs> although it doesn't seem that way, than the bliss is the one who is aware of the bliss, that unconditioned sense of self. So when we talk about change your frequency, change your life, it is absolutely true. So it's very important to know that as long as you're using your attention to focus on the things that you don't want, all the negativity, all the problems, all the fears, all the what ifs, you are going to continue to manifest more of those. That's what is occupying your attention. That's where your energy, your creative life force, the power and presence of God in you is being directed by you into growing these things that you really don't want to harvest. So what do we do? We become aware of the process. Number one, step is always awareness. Where am I investing my energy? Where am I, in other words, investing my attention? and start to become aware. You can even take a moment to really itemize this, you know, at the end of the day. What did I give my attention to today? Write it out, do that over the course of maybe seven days. Get a sense of where your attention is going, where your mind space is going. I'm not talking about only your eyes attention or what you're doing with your body, but what's happening in your mind as you are hanging out with people, as you are taking a walk, as you are just sitting in your 
computer, right? What, where's your mind? So begin to become aware of what you have been giving your attention and energy to, and you'll see that there's an exact match about like how much energy you give to this particular aspect of creation or quality of creation or, or aspect in your life or situation, circumstance, whatever it may be, and its presence in your life. Because the more attention you give to anything, the more it will be present in your experience. So literally, as an experiment, take your attention off of whatever is not serving you and take at least a portion of that time and put it onto your desire. To know your true desire, this is really important because otherwise you're going to be out chasing desires that your mom, your dad, your society, your teachers, your preachers told you. And those will not actually be very helpful to you or very fulfilling. You'll spend a lot of time chasing them, but with very little reward, if any. So it's very important that you tap into your soul desire, that soul quality. Why are you here? Why did you come here? What, what is this whole thing about for you? So you take that. Uh, and how do you get to that? Well, self-attention. Take your attention and put it on the self. Let's do that right now for a moment. Take a breath, let it go, close your eyes. Become still. Let everything in you slow down. You can even consciously allow the breath to slow down for a moment. Take a few slower breaths. And now become aware of the one that is aware of the slow breaths. Are you aware of your breathing? If your answer is yes, where did you go to find that yes? It is here in your experience. Rest right there. For a few moments, let's rest there very deeply. Stillness. Inner silence. Who is aware of that stillness? What is so still within you that even stillness itself is perceived. So the more that you give yourself the opportunity to rest here, and maybe when you come out of these moments and periods of rest, you can ask yourself the question, you can ask the divine for help. You can say, hey, divine, help me to know the truth of what I want. Why am I here? What am I here to fulfill? Take a moment to write that down. And then we use this power of our attention. Put your attention onto that. If what you're here to do is to um, have an incredible relationship with your family, amazing. Really put your attention. I have an incredible relationship with my family. If you want to explore it like this, if you spend the time of your day placing your attention there, or maybe you want to make a lot of money, or maybe you want to heal, right? And you're experiencing some illness. Don't put your attention on the problem. Really important. The problem and its solution are on a single, they are one, but they are two opposite poles of the one. Just like a magnet has a north and a south side, just like a coin has a face and, a, and tails. So make sure that your attention, and this is really important because by default, it will go to the problem because that's what you're familiar with. Move it over, mechanically move it, take it off of there and say, yeah, but what's the solution? What do I actually want? Savor it, cultivate it, look at it in your mind, feel it, right? Just place your attention on it. Doesn't matter how, even if you have it written as a word, really look at that word on a piece of paper, put your attention on it. If you begin to practice in this way, cultivating self-attention and then placing your attention on that which you truly desire, 
you're going to have a powerful revelation. You're going to see that there is really something very simple about the way reality works. And you're going to have your own direct insight. This is the same insight that I'm cultivating, right? We want to be able to prove and demonstrate with our own experience and within our own experience, these truths, the, the way that reality operates. We really want to put it to the test. And this is where, again, in the scriptures, it, say, it says, be ye doers of the word. Not, not only hearers of the word. And this is really important because this is how you find out if something's true or if it's not true. You can only do so if you really engage into it and practice it, apply it, live it, try it. And then the revelation will be there. And if it doesn't serve you, you throw it away and you're done. Alternatively, you never try it. You just think it's true. You keep thinking about it. And then you, you, you just you move through your life and you've just lived a theoretical life, a life that, um, you know, is intellectualized instead of lived cellularly. And enlightenment cannot be found in the mind. There's nothing the intellect, there's nothing that is in time that is going to take you to the timeless. What will take you to the timeless is self-attention because yourself is not in time. So I hope this has served you today. Really remember, so in summary, what you truly want to do to achieve anything is you want to change your frequency so that you are tuned into that particular channel, right? You want to explore, you want to see what that is, you want to enjoy that show, try it, right? How do we do that? We start by taking our, we start by understanding where is my attention going? Where have I been investing in it? Where, where have I been investing it, right? And then bring it back to the self through self-attention, through becoming aware that you're aware, through becoming witness to the witnessing, and then you ask yourself the question, what do I truly want? What is my true heart's desire? What am I here for? If, if, if the world didn't matter, if what my dad, my mom said, what this person or that one, or what society wanted, what if none of that mattered and I was guaranteed to be successful in whatever I did, what is that thing? What is that true desire? And then take your attention and put it on the positive end of that desire. Put it on the fulfillment, right? Just like Neville Goddard talks about, live in the end. What end? Not this end where you just desire and lack, but the fulfillment end where you enjoy, you savor, you appreciate, and you give thanks for the gift that you have already received. Fix it.